It's not downhill from here. It's always uphill for us. Glory to God. Every day is a good day in Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And um, we, we invite you to uh, share with your friends. Let them know that we're out here tonight and um, invite them to be a part of our service. Glory to God. And I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to uh, send out a post and invite. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All righty. So we're here and we're doing our Wednesday night Bible study on faith foundations. Hallelujah. And uh, we, we are uh, enjoying this, this teaching and hope you have been also as we continue. Don't forget this Sunday, be in church this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. Glory to God. We're, we've been working our way towards some things in the spirit. I believe that there's going to be some um, um, times with the Lord, times of refreshing in the Lord this Sunday. Uh, glory to God. So, um, you know, invite friends to come. Uh, come yourself and uh, be there with us on Sunday for Pentecost Sunday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, like we said, we've been teaching on um, faith foundation. I want to read um, our main text. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 4, verse Romans 1, 17. I mean, Habakkuk 2, 4, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 10, 38 all say, um, in essence, uh, what, I'm going to actually quote Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And uh, all those verses state that the just shall live by faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have said that there are many uh, very important and crucial and central or um, um, themes in the Bible that are uh, of great value to us. But of all those things, the only one that says that we're, that we're to live by is faith. We're to live by faith. Doesn't mean that we don't walk in love. Doesn't mean that we're not um, dependent upon grace. Doesn't mean that we don't need, um, you know, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. What it simply means is this is four times is stated that we're to live by faith. So it is a very, very important subject um, in the Bible. <clears throat> and of course, as anything, you can overemphasize anything, but I don't believe that we overemphasize. We try to make sure that it, it blends with the rest of the Bible and the rest of the things that are taught in the word of God. But it is, it is important. So covering this subject on a regular basis is important to the believer. We need to be refreshed, be renewed. Or even if you're hearing it for the first time, um, these things about faith. Praise God. Um, we, we were talking about last week how do we walk by faith and not by sight. And we were going to move into tonight and begin sharing along the lines of, and, and may go right past this. You know, it just depends on how long we take in covering it. That faith versus hope. Faith versus hope. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 states, Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. Now, that's the King, King James used charity to translate agape. It is love, the God kind of love. But the greatest of these is love. Now, um, don't we can't misinterpret that. All you need is love. You know, we don't need faith. We don't need hope. We, just, we really need love. He said about three, th these three abide, faith, hope, and love. Now, the greatest is love. Why? Well, faith works by love. Hallelujah. Love has to be our motivation. If I had the faith to move mountains and have not love, I'm nothing. So love is a um, character issue, it is a motivation issue, um, that when we're using something like the faith of God, the love of God will constrain us. The love of God constraineth us. It governs. Um, it, it, it governs how and why we do things. And so love is the greatest in that sense, but it doesn't mean we don't, we don't teach on faith, that we don't, all, all, all you just got to do is just love. Now, that's, that's just misquoting the Bible, and it's really not um, being biblically accurate. So, now by faith, hope, and love. Now, as, um, <clears throat> as an early word of faith, -er, hallelujah, um, we, we kind of gave hope a bad rap. And that was because many people didn't understand the difference between faith and hope. And they would um, many times simply be in hope and not in faith, and weren't getting answers. And it was, it was hard to get them over. Sometimes you say, brother, uh, I'm going to pray for you, and, and, and the Word of God says, when I lay hands on you, um, that you'll receive your healing. And uh, do you believe that? And they'll say, well, brother, I sure hope so. Well, see, they're not in faith. They hope it happens. 
they're really, in that sense, the way we, we, way we would use hope, the, the phrase we would use it, kind of meant more like we wish it would happen. Not really sure that it will. It'd be nice if it did. And I'll be happy if it does. But so I sure hope it does. And, um, and so we began to say things. We kind of, kind of began to slam hope. And, and really what we would, and that is an immaturity because in, in maturity we should have addressed the misconcept of hope in a way that brought understanding what hope really is and its relationship to faith so that we weren't you know, slamming something the Bible says abides. Hope. Hallelujah. And um, I think one of the best uh, teachers I ever heard was, um, was um, given by cannot believe his name just evaded me oh my hold on keep more <laughs> thank you i just i could not think of his name he just went totally blank um when he began he, he was teaching on hope and how that hope is an expectancy okay um and what happens when we um when we read the word of god an, ex, uh, an expectancy, a, a, a desire for something to happen arises. Hallelujah. And, um, and that's great. We need to have that hope. Um, you know, if we don't have hope, Brother Copeland has a series called Faith, I mean, Hope, the Blueprint of Faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen now if you don't have any hope there's nothing for your faith to give substance to hello are y'all there uh, if you're out there give me a hand clap let me know you showed up hallelujah can you say amen <clears throat> if there's no hope there's nothing you can have faith you can have powerful faith if you don't have any hope there's nothing for it to give substance to well, that, that, that doesn't work, does it? Amen? So, um, hope looks to the future that there is the, po there is the possibility of it happening. Um, it doesn't look in a definite time. It looks to some indefinite time. Faith, though, says, I have it now. And so, what happens is, as we see some things like, um, look at Romans chapter 4. And we'll read verses 17 through 22, and then I'll come back and read uh, uh, one verse out of the 20th, 20th century New, Trans, uh, New Testament. But in verse 17, it says here, um, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth or makes alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, as we said many, many times before. The way in the translation says, who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Therefore, it's imputed to him for righteousness. Verse 18 from the 20th century New Testament states, with no ground for hope, Abraham sustained by hope put, Faith in God. And that's good. Who against hope, believed in hope. Here it says here, with no ground for hope. Abraham sustained by hope. Put faith in God. Why? <clears throat> According to that which was spoken, God had given a word. And that word, hallelujah, gave him hope. Amen. But then he took it a step, that next step further as that, that expectation that he who um, keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, he who, uh, whose word does not return to him void, 
but accomplishes the thing that he sent it to do. That hope, that expectancy was, late, was apprehended and laid hold of by faith that he believed it was so. Hallelujah. And he brought the unseen reality that God can't lie into the realm and the present now, out of the future, into the now by faith, and his faith became the guarantee that what he was hoping for was true. Glory to God. So we have to have a hope. Amen? We have to have hope. Without it, we're in, we're in trouble. Amen? Now, we are, um, faith gives us vision. I mean, hope gives us vision. Faith lays hold of the future and embraces it now. Makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Now, if we are saved by faith, we're not saved by hope. Well, Ephesians 2 says, for by, for by, um, for by, grace, uh, for by grace are we saved through faith. Amen. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. And I think I just back, I got that one backwards. And just best me go ahead and look it up and make sure I'm reading it properly. Because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I just, I just mutilated that. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. And Romans tells us that, you know, we're saved by faith. And so, but we had to have the hope before we had the faith. That's why we preach the gospel. So that man's hearts would arise. They cried out after they preached, said, what must we do to be saved? After they heard the message, see, there was a hope. There's hope for me. There's hope for somebody like me. There's hope for the, the dirtiest, rottenest sinner on the, in the planet. There's hope for somebody who's done the things I've done. Because God so loved the world. Hope comes where there was no hope. Where there was, as Abraham, there was no ground for hope. There was no ground for hoping that he was going to be a father at 99. But he was sustained by the hope because God spoke. <clears throat> Amen. And then by faith, he, then he put his faith in God. And began to make reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Glory to God. So it's, our, our hope is important. It's, it's important that we read the scriptures and see the promises of God. And see the, see the, the and, and have, have the hope. Uh, that that applies to us. I, I remember um, there was a pastor one time on television, and he got up and he said, "Come on down here today. You know, uh, this just might—you never know. This just might be your day." He, he took all the hope away from him. He said, "What do you mean? You never know. Just might. This just might be your day. There's no hope in that. You may wish." that it was your day. But you see, there's no hope there for faith to lay hold of. Today is the day of salvation. If you're hard, not your hearts, as in the provocation. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then there is an answer for me. This is the day. If I don't turn away, he'll receive me. Now, there is a hope that you can act on by faith and receive. When you look into the Word of God and you're sick and the doctor said you're going to die and there's no hope for you and there's no answer for you <clears throat> and, um, you know, they're going to they're call you terminal and there's no, there's no way out. But the Bible says by his stripes ye were healed. When, the word, when people look into the Word of God, hope arises. And as they look to that word and they, uh, that hope that, that God, God loves me enough that he would heal me. Hallelujah. And then because of that hope they they can rise up and believe God to do what he said he would do. And lay hold of that hope and bring him into the realm of now and the reality of now. Glory to God.
I said, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Um, now, if it's not now, it's not faith. And that's where we, this is where we need to find out where we are. If, we, if we're still in the future, then it's hope. <clears throat> and that's okay as long as you don't leave it there. You've got to go the next step and then lay hold of that hope by faith and say, it's mine, I have it now. And take it out of that realm of, the, of a future expectancy into the present now, I've got it. Hallelujah. Can somebody else say amen out there? Praise the Lord. And that way, um, so we can get rid of the bad rap on hope. You need it. You've got to look in the Word of God. And uh, I know there's been times that I've looked in the Scripture and you think, I, I don't know, I don't know we have anybody else, but I know I have. That's just too good to be true. And then you look at it again. But he says it so. And then you kind of may go through the, could that be for me? And then you start saying, but, but all the promises of God are, are, are yes. Hope begins to arise. Hallelujah. <clears throat> A desire and expectancy that God will do, do it for me. That's why we got to make it real to people when we preach the word. God will do it for you. He's not a respecter of persons. Don't give it the, you never know what God's going to do. This just might be your day. There's no hope there. Even if they got all the faith in the world, they have nothing to lay hold of. But when we give them hope, then, then their hearts can take it to that next level. And as they see that God will do it for them and wants to do it for them, they can go, and I believe God not only can, I don't not only believe that, that God is willing, I believe that he has, and I call it mine now in Jesus' name. And we reach out there by faith and lay hold of that hope that came from God's word and grasp it and pull it to us and say, it's mine, I have it now. And now hope's role has been fulfilled. It pointed you in the direction. <clears throat> it created an expectancy. And then that great gift that God has dealt to every man, the measure of faith that is strengthened and increased by feeding on his word, by getting to know him, lays hold of that divinely inspired expectancy called hope. And embraces it and says it's mine. And you've moved out of the future and into the present, and you have it in Jesus' name. So, <coughs> faith and hope are not enemies, they are comrades in a common goal. Hope goes before. And faith cleans it up. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout glory? All right, I got a smile. I'm looking for a glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's so important that we um, that we don't give hope a bad rap. Yeah. And, you know, unless you're really saying, you know, uh, if we're praying for people, say, well, I'm going to lay hands on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that you'll receive your healing when I pray for you? Well, I sure hope so, preacher. Well, now, we've got to get you out of that. Okay? Now, the hope is, from the Word of God, that the Bible says, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Now, we're laying hands on the sick tonight. And I'm, I'm anointed by God to lay hands on the sick. Do you believe that? Well, yeah. And, and, and do you believe it's for you? Well, well the Bible says, that says it does, so... So, yeah, I have an expectancy that it does. Now, let's take it that next step. When I lay hands on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, will you receive it? Yes, I will. Now we've, now we've taken it. And so hope becomes the um, expectancy. It becomes the blueprint. It becomes the avenue by which our faith operates and functions and lays hold of the promises of God. So it's not an enemy to us. Are you here? But we preached so much about it in, 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 and, in, and in ways years ago that people got afraid to even use the word hope. 
Um, you know, we, we can, like I said, we can overemphasize anything. And um, it's important that we, we come back and go, you know what? It, it's, it's not a bad thing to be in hope. You know, we got you halfway there. <laughs> Praise God. All we got to do is get you that next step over. Amen. Amen. We can get you that next step over. You got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you got, you got to believe that you can get it. Amen. Now, so let's go ahead now. We, we talked about faith and hope and the difference, but you know, the difference and, and, and really, um, it's not we're in faith or it's not, it's a matter of either or faith or hope. No, hope is the starter. Faith is the finisher. We say that again. You might want to write that down somewhere. Hope is the, is the starter. Faith is the finisher. It's, it's a relay race. Hope starts it out. Faith finishes it up. Amen. Y'all out there? Hope is a starter. Faith is the finisher. Now, hope will never finish. And faith will never start. I want that to sink in. Hope will never finish. And faith will never start. It starts with hope and it finishes with faith. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. So if hope is going to start it, if hope is going to look to the word and an expectancy, an expected desire becomes because we see it in the word that it can be, it, it, it can be ours. That God wants to do it for us. Then we come up and we pass the baton to faith. And faith says now. What? Faith sees the answer. Faith sees the faith sees the finish line. <clears throat> you see, in a, in a relay race, the starter never crosses the finish line. Faith, the uh, the uh, the guy who finishes, who's the last one in the relay, never sees the starter blocks. Amen. So as your your hope has gone out there, and you're looking and saying, "Oh God, I see how good God is. I see how wonderful God is. I see the marvelousness of God. The wonders of God." And how he's done all these things. And then I found that scripture that all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. Uh, alternate translation. For all the promises of God, whatever their number, find the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. Hallelujah. Faith, hope's got us going, and faith is going to finish. Because faith sees the answer. It sees the finish line. It reaches for it. It goes for the prize. Amen. It will not be denied. Amen. Hallelujah. Hope has run its leg and passed off the baton. It's over on the sidelines getting, re getting rehydrated, you know, uh, getting in some salt tablets, whatever. But faith is out there running. It's not going to be not de be denied the finish line. Hallelujah. By keeping the word before us. Amen. Proverbs 420. And this is where we, we need to really make sure other people understand this. And we all need to understand this. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health or medicine to their flesh. When the starter of a relay team starts, he has one goal in mind, to get out there and get this thing going. Amen. And do the best he can until he passes up. 
He's never looking at the finish line. He's always waiting to pass off. Hope is always waiting to pass off. But faith has to keep his heart with all diligence. Um, cannot let his eyes depart from the words before them. Amen. Tend my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. When faith takes the baton, it sees one thing, the finish line. And it's running with everything it's got to get to that finish line. Hallelujah. Amen. So, keep the word in your mystery heart. James 1. I'm sorry some folks are missing this tonight. This is good. Can I get amen in the house? I, I was just literally, I was asking that question. Can I get an amen in the house? Are we supposed to say amen? Yes! <laughs> Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself and goeth, what, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, one thing you can, when you're running a race, you cannot do is you cannot become distracted by what's going on in the other lanes. You have to be fixed on your prize. Amen. You can't get distracted by stuff going on over here. You can't get distracted if the guy next to you bumps and knocks the other guy out of his lane. You can't get distracted if he's over there talking trash to you while he's running. You got to have your eyes fixed. Be doers of the word. Keep your eye on the prize. Amen. Joshua 1 8. That's way on back there. Hallelujah. Right after Deuteronomy, 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 Deuteronomy. All right, Deuteronomy 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. <coughs> We are to keep the word before us. Constantly looking at that which is the ultimate truth of all truth. God's holy word. That God is not a man that he should lie. Hath he not spoken it? Shall he not perform it? Glory to God. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. This is why I say that, that, that faith is the, is the anchor, the finisher, with one goal, one purpose, one destiny, and that is to finish and keep his eyes fixed on God, on his word, on the truth of his word. And nothing else can enter in and become a distraction to what you're believing God for. Hallelujah. Faith will contradict circumstances. Um, people that think wrong have their believing wrong. And if your believing is wrong, then your talking is wrong. And if your talking is wrong, then you'll be defeated. I'll never forget, um, um, some of y'all are old enough to remember or may have gone back and watched the movie Chariots of Fire. Uh, the story about er Eric Little and um, some Abrams. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a Jew versus a Gentile. I mean, this whole movie was, it was, it was a very, um, symbolic, allegoric movie 
uh, about, you know, the, a, a, a Jew and a Gentile, uh, you know, achieving and, you know, and um, but I remember uh, one of the when uh, Abram went to see little little run um, in a race. And they were going to end up in the Olympics and um, never did run against each other. They ended up because he wouldn't run on a Sunday. It, they switched places and this kind of stuff and uh, both win. But in a, an earlier race, when he was watching uh, Eric Little run, I think Lidl, 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 okay. It was Scottish, and you know, however they pronounced it. <clears throat> um, he was running, and he was on the inside. A guy came and knocked him into the center. He rolled on the ground, and he was way behind. And, you know, they bit in all slow motion. It, it like it took 25 hours, you know, for him to get up and get back on the course, not really. You know, it was a matter of seconds. Um, but in a, in a race, a matter of seconds, you can finish last by 40 lengths. Um, but he got up and he got up and began to run. And he, th you know, and and they, I mean, I know it's Hollywood, you know, embellishment. But he ran, he's running with his head back and just running with everything he's got. And he begins to pass, 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 pass. The guy that knocked him off the course, he passed him <coughs> and wins the finish line. Hallelujah. Why? Because he believed he could win. He believed that if he ran, he said, he doesn't run for him, he runs for God. And that God's pleasure was on him. And when we walk by faith and we don't walk by sight, God's pleasure is upon us. And we can run with everything we got because we eyes on one thing, the prize. Amen? Hallelujah. So we, we, we don't give ourselves to wrong speaking. We don't give ourselves to wrong thinking. We don't give ourselves to wrong believing. We stay in the realm of faith. Hallelujah. Faith is to say about yourself what God's word says about you. Now remember, hope's already passed. Hope went out there and found it. Hope went out there and found the scriptures. Hope went out there and found and got this thing started. It's passed the baton over to your faith. Now your faith is running with it. And your faith says what God's word says. Amen. Hebrews 4.14. <clears throat> well, it's in the Bible. <laughs> Did y'all know that? Hebrews 4 is in the Bible. All right. Seeing then we have passed, 414, seeing then we have passed, uh, that we have a great high priest that has passed into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. You see, doesn't this make sense? If we kind of look at this in that race allegory, you know, hope's gone out there, it's got the scriptures, it's got the things started, it's passed the baton back to faith, now it just holds fast to its purpose. It just runs like the daylights to get to that finish line, and it won't let anything get in its way. Hold fast your profession. Why? Because Jesus is your high priest. He is the one who guarantees through his blood and his resurrection and ascension and seating at the right hand of the Father that his word comes to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, let's hold fast our profession. The word professional or confession, the same Greek words translated both ways, means to say the same thing as. We keep saying the same thing that God says. You can't say what the scoffers say. Hello? You big jerk, you'll never do anything. You're going to lose. Uh, you, you're, not, you, you're a washout. You're no good. You can't listen to them. Those who can't always want to bring down those who can or will. You can't listen. And the devil hates everything about what you do. So you follow after God. Maintain that level of faith, looking at the prize, and you keep saying the same thing that God says. You're a winner. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we would be um, wanton if we did not go to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. I mean, I'm not sure if you can even teach on faith without talking about Mark. Not be a bona fide rainbow graduate anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mark 11, 22. Uh, Jesus answering and saith unto them, have faith in God, or had the God kind of faith. Amen. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Hallelujah. <coughs> Abraham with no ground for hope, sustained by hope, Amen. Glory to God. Put faith in God. Hope will start you. Faith will finish. They work together and you get the answer. You get the prize. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen out there? Hallelujah. 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 Anybody get anything out of this? Glory to God. I got blessed. I mean, sitting here, you know, in the, the uh, coffee table setup kind of thing, hard to get up and shout and run, but I'm shouting and running on the inside. How about that? <laughs> amen. 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 Well, we so thank for y'all joining us tonight. Um, if you'd like to give, we appreciate it. Uh, giving to the church. Amen. Um, you can give through PayPal or through Square or the Cash App, and so into the into, so into the work of God. As we continue to go forth and get ready for what God's what's coming, what God's doing, glory to God. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, as people tithe and give and sow into the to work of God, we thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them. That you empty out on them blessings they do not have room enough to receive. There are delights on land. They lend to many <coughs> and don't borrow. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call it so. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, we're so happy that you joined us tonight. Glad that you were with us. We trust that you were blessed by this. Um, I think you could go back out to the um, Facebook page and share this with other people. This was a good teaching. And um, I'm not just bragging on me. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost bringing revelation and sharing and teaching through this vessel. This was good. And uh, I trust you'll, you'll be blessed, continue to be blessed by it for, for many, many days and years to come. Hallelujah. All righty. Remember these words again. We'll quote it again <clears throat> from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here. Um, and don't forget, Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Come expecting the fire of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.